So here we have the positions at the end of the tenth turn. Um, you can see the French are still strung out here. This is, I think, starting from here is the uh, Imperial Guard. And um, they're in stacks, but actually you can imagine each hex filled up. So <clears throat> each hex has about 500 men in maximum 900 in this um, at this scale. So <clears throat> um, which essentially means a regiment of 500 men is going to fill one hex of the road. Um, so those stacks are actually spread out. You can imagine just a long tail down here. You can see the rest of the Imperial Guard there waiting to come on. Um, off map is the uh, Sixth Corps. Um, so I think I modified my uh, battle plan slightly. The um, at First Corps, the Erlons Corps here, they're the sort of pinning force, and if it works well, the second side of the pincer, then you've got the, I think it's the Third Corps, isn't it? The, so the first corps spreading out here essentially. They had cavalry move up to cover their flanks, but the cavalry are now shifting round to join in the attack with the third corps, which is coming round here. And they just um have just reached the pickets and skirmish um elements that were cast out um, by the British as the French moved up here to delay them. Wellington himself has moved over here. It's now at the end of the 10th turn, according to the scenario rules of this um, freer setup scenario, um, the early morning attack scenario, I think it's called, um, <clears throat> Wellington cannot release, uh, cannot commit any more Anglo-Allied units until um, the 10th to, until the 11th turn. So he's here ready to um, release the two Dutch um, <coughs> brigades over here, which will then move up to help cover, um, engage, well, in fact, to engage the advancing French. Um, so there's been no change in dispositions here. There were the odd um, brigade that was activated and could have essentially moved out, but that would have been piecemeal. And um, Wellington still wasn't sure um, until the the Imperial Guard started moving this way. They they could have moved up here, in which case the attack could have been centrally, or it could have, this could even have been a feint. They, they could have fallen on Hougamont, and the main attack could have been in this direction too. So these all stayed in place, but now it, it, he, he feels there is a necessity to activate these and they're not just going to wait in reserve back there. Um, but he's not activating anyone else here yet, because, you, you know, the axis of attack could still be kind of from this direction. We're not sure if it's going to be from this direction at all, as as the Anglo-Allied. Um, and the French... It's now at this point where all these disruptors, so the artillery and... Um, Cavalry uh, automatically become, everyone becomes disrupted when you use road movement, although you get double move on that. And the artillery and cavalry could not become disrupted until this point as well, the beginning of the 11th turn. So um, there was temptation to move, um, to ask these skirmishers to engage as the French were m moving up around um, artillery that was limbered and so forth. But two things stopped them. One is the fact that you... Um, skirmishers cannot move further than five hexes from a parent uh, battalion. So that would have necessitated moving some parent battalions in to Ougemont and then allowing the skirmishers to move out further. They can sit and remain further than five hexes away, but they can't move um, if they're further than five hexes away. So we didn't want to bring fellows off the ridge line here. And then the other thing was that there were cavalry covering, although the cavalry were disrupted, um, it would have been a risk. Uh, the skirmishers may well have just got run down, and that would have then left gaps in the defence of Ougemont. Um, so the French are forming up here. Um, got some artillery. Um, uh, there's some cavalry still covering the flank here. But essentially they're sort of forming up into three lines here and one line here. 
Um, so I think the first call is going to be tasked with taking this. And well, yes, that's that's my plan. We've got um, cavalry coming back around here and here, um, cavalry divisions. And then you can see, oh, it's second core, not third core. So second core all the way up to here and here. Second core artillery that have moved out onto the secondary road. So they'll try and get as far as possible under cover from some infantry while well, these infantry start to engage so um the artillery are going to have to to cover that um them as they move out so that the rest of second corps can move up and assemble ready for the assault um and then um sixth corps are going to defend the flank so they will um move up i think on this road Perhaps on this road, depends on what, what the enemy's doing, what we want to present to them. If they go on this road, they can move out on that flank there. But um, the idea is to just protect the flank of First Corps, not to go too far out. So First Corps can happily move in there if it needs be and uh, take Hougoumont. So that is the position at present. And... Um, the um, 11th turn is 11.45, so in two turns' time, it's it's noon. So you can see the uh, it's still going to take quite a while to get into positions before the, the French attack really takes off. And at um, 3 p.m., the Prussians will start arriving over here. They are a long way off, but you can see it's not... The French still do, will not have much time... Um, even sort of swooping around here and hoping to um, not encounter the, the difficulties of attacking the ridge um, A, they're going to be held up by the Dutch there and B, it's taking a long time so we, um, I haven't really timetabled it and, and, and I'm not sure how long it's going to take but hopefully the um, Sixth Corps will be able to hold off. They might have to move up to... Well, Plan Sinon would be fine if they held the Russians off at Plan Sinon. It depends if the, if the Prussians come onto the flank of the First Corps or if they come try coming down here to cut off um, the supply lines. So it will depend what the Sixth Corps has to do. And there we are. That's the position at mo the moment. Turns are going very quickly because it's, it's really just movement. Um, and it's a bit... It, logistically, it's difficult because um, with the movement only being a reasonable distance on the road up to this point, um, only two hexes essentially for infantry off-road... I've been trying to stick to rows, which of course meant we've had lots of log jams, occasional units sort of losing their leaders because they were in the wrong place in a line and so forth. So it's taken quite a while to sort out first corps and um, transition the uh, cavalry across. Thinking about it, I, I should just have sent the cavalry straight up here. They could have started dealing with these skirmishers. Um, they didn't really need to cover the flanks because uh, if Wellington had, um, he couldn't commit any other units. If if these had started moving or, or either of these, any of these on the top had started moving down to engage First Corps, that would have weakened his defence and that would have been good for us. Um, he didn't have any cavalry committed, so th there was no threat from cavalry. I played it as though Napoleon was considering there was a threat, but thinking about it, I should have let... Um, first Corps just uh, take that as it comes maybe held some cavalry in reserve back here just in case but so they're gonna they're slowly working their way around and they should be able to help um, clear out these skirmishes soon and I, and I, I, I don't know that artillery and the, those cavalry and then some of the the um, uh, Second Corps are going to have to deal with them. That's going to be the next 
major um the, the first sort of phase of the major phase of the operation and then it's and the, in, at the same time as that will be first course taking Ougemont, which is a difficult proposition um French units are just starting to break down into skirmish companies in preparation for taking on these skirmishers. Uh, it's difficult, it's slow moving through there. It's a lot of feeding in the skirmishers back and forth, the skirmishers, slow attrition of skirmish units against each other. I'd like to ignore it as the um as the French um but the worry is, is that, that um, then the F British might move a uh, brigade in and then the skirmishers could move out and cause a lot of harrying damage and disrupt um, assembly and, and attacks as they went in. So it is a sore and it has to be taken out, I feel.